Good evening, stats fans. It's time again for Robert Adut with yaymath.org. My name is Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. Backwards. Yeah. Only two episodes left in this ground-shaking, earth-changing, pioneering series. Tonight on our penultimate episode, we're making sense of plots that are scattered about. Each year, it seems, the notion of buying championships in professional sports grows all the more popular. If there were a poster child for this throw money at the problem tactic, it would be the New York Yankees, blah, 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 spending mountains of cash and achieving 27 World Series titles. But what exactly is the relationship between cha-ching payroll and the number of wins in a season? Does money actually buy wins? Take that. Or is it a myth? It's a total myth, Robert. Joining us for insight into one of sport's most timely questions is a man who has dedicated his career in the front office to this very question. It's Mr. Moneyball himself, a man so sexy only Brad Pitt could play him, Oakland Athletics Executive Vice President of Baseball Operations and minority owner, Billy Bean. Billy, welcome to Stat Center. Stats and sports, Robert. One does not work without the other. Now, Billy, the money buying wins question, is it fact or merely fiction? Well, I think you know where I stand in this debate, Robert. And I think the consistent winning record of our Oakland A's, Plug. despite a relatively low payroll, is reason enough to argue it's a myth. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at the math. Here, we have what's called a scatter plot, pairing the wins of each major league team to their payrolls. On the x-axis below, we have the payroll variable, representing what each team spent that specific year. On the y-axis, at the left here, we have the win variable, representing the number of games each team won in that same year. Each point on the scatter plot represents one team, with the graph revealing how many games each team won in relation to the amount of money it spent on its players. With all the points on the scatter plot, we can get a general idea of how the two variables interact. Okay, we'll come back to that idea in a second. But first, Billy, can you help our lovely viewers at home learn how to interpret scatter plots? Sorry, Robert, sometimes I forget I'm not in the front office talking with my guys. In a scatter plot, the main attributes to look for are trend, strength, and shape. So the trend being the general direction of the graph? Exactly. Shown here are examples of two scatter plots of varying direction. The scatter plot on the left is trending downwards, showing a negative relationship. That is, as the values on the x-axis increase, the values on the y-axis decrease. The scatter plot on the right shows an increasing or positive relationship. What about strength? Are some scatter plots just more muscular than others? Ow. Yeah, it was a bad joke, Robert but you're actually not that far off. It still hurts. The strength of a scatter plot refers to how tightly grouped the points are around a certain trend. The strong relationship has points predictably close to that general trend, while a weak relationship has points that are spread apart. So going back to these two examples, the scatter plot on the left has points that are high on the left and low on the right. And those points are a bit spread out but they still seem to show some common trend. We might call this a moderately strong negative relationship. With the scatter plot on the right, the points are going in a positive direction and they're very close to the line. They almost form a straight line by themselves. So we'd say they give us a strong positive relationship. Now what about shape, the final characteristic? With shape, we're mostly interested in whether the appearance of the data is linear or non-linear. A linear relationship means that the points of the scatter plot approximate a straight line without any jumps or curves. A non-linear relationship is just a relationship that simply doesn't approximate a straight line. Going back to our original question, whether there's a relationship between payroll and wins, 
we could actually see whether or not these two groups of data are linearly associated with each other. Okay, it appears that the trend does seem somewhat positive, but is there a way to be more exact with our conclusion? Well, in that case, we need to examine the actual numeric data we use to plot. There's a magical number that represents how strong the relationship may or may not be within data. We use it all the time in our Moneyball calculations. It's called the correlation coefficient. Here's the formula. What is that thing? Is that Greek? Oh, it is Greek. Huh, cool. And just an FYI, even some of the best statisticians in our franchise don't know it by heart. So don't feel like you need to. An internet search for correlation coefficient calculator will lead you to where you want to go. The calculator will ask for every data pair. So, beginning with the first pair, the Dodgers at around 235 mil, yikes, paired with 88 wins. Next, the Yankees with 203 mil and 84 wins, continuing down the list until every pair is entered. Oakland, if you're wondering, is sixth from last with a total payroll of a little over 83 mil, which is also paired with 88 wins. Same number of wins as the Dodgers. Was it worth all that moolah, LA? Time will tell. I assume the R in the formula is the correlation coefficient? Quite astute, adute. <laughs> yes, and R will always be a number between negative one and one. The reason being, that negative linear relationships will have a negative R value, and positive linear relationships have a positive R value. The closer to zero the correlation is, the weaker the relationship. Okay, so let me get this straight. For example, a correlation of negative 0.2 would be a weak negative relationship, while a correlation of negative 0.8 will be a strong negative relationship. Same would go with positive 0.2, that would be a weak positive relationship, and 0.8 would be a strong positive relationship. Is that right? Might be asking you to come and work for the A's after this interview, Robert. My resume's online. Yes, and it turns out from the correlation calculator that the R value correlating total payroll and total wins is 0.22. So there you have it. At least for this particular year, we can conclude that there is barely a positive relationship between payroll and overall wins. That realization certainly paves the way for other factors that influence winning besides payroll, like the importance of coaching, or even team chemistry, or the difficulty of a team's schedule. Or the importance of on-base hits versus stacking your team with home run hitting superstars. Moneyball, it works. <sighs> you had me at on-base, Billy. Just win a World Series, would ya? Working on the math right now to make it happen, Robert. Whatever your front office strategy, join us tomorrow night for our season finale. Until then, keep it one, just one, standard deviation ahead of the curve, stats fans. I'm gonna take you up on that job offer. I hate it here. <laughs>